All right, this is number five from the AP Physics uh, 2011 exam, and we are looking at primarily an electromagnetism problem. There's other stuff in there like dynamics and electrostatics. And so we have a plastic sphere falling through a electric field. We basically have two plates separated by distance L, and then we're gonna apply a voltage to the two plates to have an electric potential difference between them. And um, we are going to do an experiment. And so A, the potential difference, V, is applied between the top and bottom plates such that the sphere falls at, the sphere falls at constant speed V. We need to derive an expression for the charge Q on the sphere and make sure you put it in the proper terms and constants. So, if the sphere is falling at constant speed, it means it's falling while it's in equilibrium which means its net force must be zero. And if you think about it, it's falling, so there's a force down, and there's gotta be a force canceling that to have the net force be zero. So we have your electric force that's gotta be up minus the force due to gravity, which is gonna be down. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter if you flip the sign because they're gonna end up equaling each other. Your electric force will equal the weight. Recognize, we need to drive an exp expression in terms of the charge Q, but the answer needs to be in terms of M, L, and V. Voltage is in here. Let's expand these equations out and see what we can do. We have K, Q1, Q2 over R squared, and that's going to equal MG. Now, we're looking for the charge of the sphere. But if we look inside here, we can actually pull out the voltage equation. V equals KQ over R. Well, this is KQ over R times Q over R again. So ultimately, this turns into VQ over R equals MG. Now, R is indeed the distance within the field. That's going to be the distance it is away. That's going to be L. So Q really is MG times L over V. Let's just make sure everything's in terms of fundamental constants and givens. M, L, and V. M, L, and V. And then G is one of the fundamentals. We're good to go. This is the answer to A. Now, we're going to do this experiment over and over and over again. I don't know why this does this sometimes. It's very frustrating. Anyhow, uh, we're going to do this experiment over and over again, and we're going to adjust the potential difference between the plates and we're going to get multiple different values of Q. So for every given voltage, we have a Q. And the data is plotted in the graph below. And we need to explain why is there a gap between the 1700 volt and 2800 volt mark? What's the reason for this? This is a little roundabout, but think about it. If at, let's say, 3000 volts, we get a nice consistent cluster, we are able to determine the charge of the particle is just under 2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Interesting, 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Hopefully that reminds you of a fundamental charge or the elementary charge. Q, the smallest Q that can possibly exist, is 1.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. That is this charge right here. We take another jump, if we look over here, we're looking at right around the three and a half spot. Well, guess what? That's this times two. This is two Q. Well, instead of crossing out, I'll just multiply it times two. We're going to get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we're going to go down the line. We're going to continue to have every possible one, 4.8, all the way, all the way up. Increments of 1.6. The answer we're looking for is simply to state that charge is quantized. No sphere can have a charge between 1.6 and 3.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay. C. And 
There it is. Uh, the value, uh, if the value of L is 0 0.05 meters, what is the mass of the, the spheres themselves? The, the little balls that we're dropping, right? Well, for that, we just got to look at the original equation we already derived. Let me just rewrite it instead of dealing with my program. Q is MGL over V. M is what I'm looking for. M is going to be VQ over GL. So G and L are given values. V and Q we're going to get from our graph. So if we look up at our graph here, just pick a value that you can read. And uh, I'm going to go with 500 because there's a nice tight cluster here uh, that's close to this 10 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now here's where it's hard for me to advise what to do. I know that it needs to be an increment of 1.6. There's 1.6. Ooh, look at this. This is not an increment. What's wrong with me? This is 3.2. 1.6, 3.2, 4.8, 6.48, 9 10 to the 19. You know, you're reading a graph, so I think you'd probably be okay writing 10 by 10 to the 19, but that's not quantized, so you should be able to recognize that really the Q that's associated with 500 volts is actually 9.6. So that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to say 500 volts times 9.6 by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. I'm not certain if you'd lose points if you use 10. It's kind of a gray area if you ask me because it's telling you to use your graph that is directly from your graph. I don't see a problem with it, but then again, you are gambling a little bit, so just keep that in mind. Uh, we're dealing with really tiny stuff. We're dealing with an experimental setting, so I'm going to uh, recommend using 9.8 meters per second squared for this problem. I also do believe you could get away with continuing to use 10 because that's a normal policy. Then again, you're dealing with an experiment. You should use more accurate numbers. It's my recommendation, at least. Uh, anyhow, do this math, and you're going to get a number, right? And I am going to do that real quick. Nine point eight times ten to the negative sixteen kilograms. All right. Now uh, we have a uniform magnetic field that we're going to add. Oy. We have a uniform magnetic field that we're going to add into the, th the problem here, and it's only the bottom half, so L over two from the bottom plate. We're going to repeat the experiment and. We're going to, once again, adjust this so the sphere is going at a nice constant speed. And D1, we want you, you want to tell me what, first of all, the motion of the sphere is as it travels into this field. Now, this is a uh, good old uh, moving charge entering a magnetic field scenario. If a moving charge enters a magnetic field perpendicular to a magnetic field, it is going to experience a force perpendicular to its motion. Anytime any particle traveling in a linear sense experiences a perpendicular force, it is going to undergo circular motion. So ultimately, D1, really the only thing you need to indicate is that the sphere will move in a circular or curved path. You don't even need to say which way yet, because, well, you don't know which way. Because D2 now says, well, how could that motion be used to describe the sign of the charge? Well, here's where that comes into play. If it's positive, it'll curve one way, and if it's negative, it'll curve the other way. But you need to know definitively which way each would curve. For that, you're going to use your right-hand rules. I describe this as right-hand rule number two. That's the one where I say the uh, motion of the particle is my index finger. My thumb, which is perpendicular to my index finger, will be the direction of force acting on the particle. My remaining fingers will be perpendicular to both my index finger and my thumb, and that'll represent the direction of the magnetic field. Now, you see here the direction of the magnetic field is represented by X's. That means it's into the page. The motion is down, so I'm going to point my index finger straight down. I'm going to have my remaining fingers pointed into my page, and I'm going to notice that my thumb is pointing to the right. That means if it's a positive particle, it'll curve to the right. Okay, so that'd be for positive. It'll curve to the right, or if you're looking from the perspective we're looking at, we'd say counterclockwise. But if it's a negative particle, it'll have the same size curve. It'll just curve to the left or clockwise. You do need to clarify that. You do need to indicate that. Positive curves to the right. Negative curves to the left. Uh, and finally, E. 
derive an expression for the minimum value B needed to prevent the sphere from reaching the bottom of the plate. We need to keep these in terms of M, Q, V, and L. All right, so let's think about it. I already kind of drew this here. We know this particle is going to experience a circular path, right? If that field wasn't strong enough, it would curve, but it wouldn't stop and it would smack into the bottom of the plate. If it was strong, very strong, it would tightly curve and would miss the bottom of the plate completely. If we're at that perfect sweet spot, it would create a circle such that it just barely clears the bottom of that plate and it'll travel in a circular manner. Now, of course, it won't continue in a circular manner up here. I'm just drawing the circle here to explain this thought a little bit more. You know what? Let me erase this all so it's not as cumbersome and I'll use my circle drawing tool so we can see that ideally right about there is the size of the circle that we want this magnetic field to create right ideally that's what we want no what's wrong with me ideally it can be bigger than that it needs the curve such that it would want to make a nice big circle thicks up the whole plane. Now, of course, up top here, one, and so really what would happen is it would curve, 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 leave the field and go, it would start to decelerate, or no, it wouldn't decelerate, it would just go constantly forward up until this top plate. So this circle has a radius equal to L over 2, the size of the magnetic field itself. Let's get it come into play down here. So let's look at it. We're looking at the fact that the magnetic force is going to create a centripetal force. That magnetic force is the magnetic force acting on the moving particle, Q, V, B. Now recognize it needs to be perpendicular. It is, so I'm going to drop that sine theta stuff. And that's going to equal M V squared over R. Now the V will cancel out one of these Vs over here. The R is actually L over 2. And we're dividing by the reciprocal, so really B, I'm going to move that Q down here too, B will equal 2MV over QL. That's going to be my derived equation. Now I just want to double check, make sure all of the units or variables are the ones given. M, we're good. V, we're good. L, we're good. And Q, we're good. This is it. This is the answer. Minimum. Maybe, so. yeah, I think we should subscript this as V min or B minimum. Because we know that the field can be bigger than that. This is just simply what would make it so it stays within the plates. All right, that's it. Thank you.